Okay, so we'll do another um, tips and tricks video. Lucas Mill tips and tricks. I, uh, I started this video the other day um, doing a uh, changeover from the dimension cutter to the slabber and the weather turned a bit bad, started to rain a bit and I did the change I was doing the changeover without a mill, without a log in the mill. Um, so I thought what I'll do is I'll uh, rather than just you know showing you without a log in the mill, I'll do a real 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 time version, you know, real case log in the mill. You can see I've um, taken some planks off already off this log and I've hit a spot where I think it looks really nice, good enough for a slab. So I'm doing some back sawing. So sawing the back of the grain. I find that once you take the top off the log with the dimension cutter, then you can sort of make the decision whether you want to keep cutting with the dimension cutter um, or if you want to get some slabs. This is usually the best spot you're going to get slabs out of, the back saw section. Um, best quality slabs. So yeah, I want to get some slabs off now. So what I'll do is I'll do a changeover from the uh, dimension cutter to the slabber. See how long it takes. So yeah, we want to park the, um, before we take it off, I like to park the dimension cutter in its resting position. Handle in there, locked off so I can't slide that way, then lock these gauges off. And the mill just can't move around. Fuel off in case I don't run it again today. Put the blade. Always leave the saw, you know, park the saw with the blade in the upright position. Always leave the saw with the blade in the upright position. The reason for that, I think, is because this gas strut, wherever the gas strut is, just there, which push, holds the blade either horizontal or vertical, you want to leave that gas strut closed. Um, that's the best way for the uh, gas strut to be left for any length of time. So this is the way I store the mill. So what I need now is wheels. So get the mill so the wheels are going to go down in clear space. So We've got a line now that we're cutting on. We've set this line. This is the line we, we want to use through the whole log. So you want to, um, when we lower the mill, change the power heads, you want to come back to this line. So I always, when I measure, I keep the gauges at the top on the stopper, the depth gauge, and then put this other gauge, the marker, to the top. So that's everything at the top. That's this level. top, marker to the top, so now we can go down from here. I'll just go down that far, and I'll take this one down to a similar height, and when that's resting on the ground, you stop there. What I like to do is, when I know this is resting, it's not going to roll away anywhere, I take the brake off. Because if you leave that brake on and you keep lowering down, there's a chance as it goes down, the brake could catch on this rail. It might bend your rail. I don't know. Just something I like to do. So then we can go all the way down. All the way to the bottom. Take this one all the way to the bottom. Doesn't matter so much going all the way to the bottom when you're taking it off, but when you go to try to put the um, slabber back on, you'll see how what I mean about it being nice and low. You want to be careful too when you've got a scrap heap to the side of the mill that there isn't a piece of scrap underneath that rail that you lower down onto and it lifts one of the corners and messes with your line. Then we can take 
this one out. Now, one of the issues I have with this slabber when you're trying to get it back on is uh, there's very tight tolerances trying to fit the slabber in here and drop down. So especially when you're up off the ground in one corner like we are here, the slabber only likes going onto the rails by yourself. It's fine if you've got two people because you can just manhandle it and lift it on. But it only likes going on nice and easy when the rails are down and at ground level. So we're not at ground level here because I'm up on that block. So what I usually do is just put something underneath the wheels when you bring it in just to get it to sit to almost ground level. It's not so bad when you're working with an offsider because two people can sort of manhandle it onto the rails nice and safely. But when you're by yourself like I am here today, it's a bit bloody tricky. So, you see what I mean? We got this, gotta get that wheel up under that. All right, see how close that is there? Get down past the rail. If I didn't have those planks there, that wouldn't have, that center, that piece, that would have just hit on that and not gone down. Just cause all sorts of dramas. So that's a handy little trick. Get the mill up off the ground so it's almost at the same level as the cross member. Should go on nice and easy. So yeah, we're milling, slabbing that way. With the, uh, like I've said before in previous videos, we got the um, tip of the slabber against the, the stays, the bracing stays. That'll direct the force into the triangle, which will stop the mill from wobbling too uh, aggressively to the side as you start putting the pressure on as you go through. So when I set this log up, I knew that I'd probably want to slab it. So I made sure I left, I think it's about 550 mils for my slabber. Left that much room down there in order for the slabber to fit past. She's pretty tight, but I'm pretty sure I measured her right. So we'll go back up to where we were before. So when you start getting up there, you wanna watch this gauge on there. And then check these out to make sure that the mill's dropped in, dropped into the groove. All right, that's in the groove. So yeah, just as you crank this up, just lift the chain out to get the uh, marker past the bottom of the depth gauge. Cause you've got these, these uh, measurements all set. You don't want to move this on the chain cause it gets stuck up against that simple so break on I'm happy that's all locked in nice I'm gonna lift the other side just to go up evenly one thing I've got into bad habit of doing is just cranking that without pushing this down which uh, you know doing that it wears out all the cogs in here reduce the life of your um with your winch but yeah if you're gonna do that on mine the new ones have got a break in there so that when you push this down this won't spin around so you know with the power head on it you'll see in a second there's a lot of weight there's a lot of weight on that handle and a couple of times a bit of weight there. All right, it's running. A couple of times I've actually let go of this handle and I've had my button, my hand on the button, finger on the button, and this thing 
going around and just whacked the back of my hand. Jeez, does that hurt. All right, so one more click. We are back at the same position, same level as we were before. You'll notice that the slabber, the line of the slabber is, I think it's 48 or 50 mils lower than the line of the dimension cutter, which is, you know, that's pretty well perfect. Ready for the next slab. Yeah, there we go. 45 mils. So it's probably 48 from the top of the kerf of the dimension cutter. So say 45, that's where this is sitting now. So I'll probably do a two inch slab out of this. So all I need to do, is drop it down, real five, not five from the kerf, real five. Always go below where you want to go to, back up. 20, real five. There. So that should give us round about 50 mil slab. Cool. So that's how we change over from the dimension cutter to the slabber. Another way you can do it, which I've done in other videos, um, I think I've done in the Blackwood time lapse, is uh, had a mill set up at each end. So you uh, say you dimension cut this way, dimension cut wood comes out there. And then you slab from that way, slabs go out there. So, you know, this is probably taken five minutes or something to change from the dimension cutter to the slabber, vice versa. So, yeah, you could do it in less than a minute if you had both power heads sitting on the mill at the same time. Not all sites are going to allow that because you've got your stays on a particular side, you're loading from a particular side, you've got wood stacks somewhere. Sometimes it's just easy to change, easier to change over. So, yeah, all right. Hope this has been helpful. Uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, if it's been helpful. Um, subscribe if you want to see more of them. Got uh, plenty more ideas for tips and tricks of running a Lucas mill. So, yeah, I'll just keep them coming. All right, thank you. See you later.